Do you do you often run into people who have no idea what podcasting is? Not as much as uh, I used to. Like it was, uh, you know, you had to be prepared to explain it every time you mentioned podcast. And now that most people at least have some type of reference point, you know. Um, and maybe it's because of the circle I sort of run in now. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think it's as you know. Oh, it's an internet radio show. We're like, well, it's not really an internet radio show, but you know, it's up on iTunes. And iTunes is this thing that you download, and you know, like there was this whole, uh, you know, you had to have it at the ready every time. Uh, now I, I don't find myself doing that uh, too much anymore. That's so funny. I talked to um, my parents about it as well because I, I told them I have a podcast, and you know, it's just the same exact questions. Like you, in in our community, it's you just take it for granted that you, sure. every, everyone yeah. knows. But then, when you, if you if you were to find like I always say, if you were to find yourself like with a, you know, like a sixty five year old woman in an elevator, and she's like, "Oh, what do you do?" and you're like, "Well, uh, and it's, <laughs> uh, you like, might just tell her you're a janitor. <laughs> it's easier to explain." <laughs> Podcast junkies, episode nine one. If you're new to the show, my name is Harry Duran. I'm the host. I have a new episode every week, Monday-ish, and I interview podcasters. Seems pretty straightforward. Nothing too crazy about that. I just try to have people on the show that I can connect with for about an hour every week and get to know them and figure out what makes them tick. Try to find out something that you may not have known if you're a fan of their show and uh, make a new friend in the process. And it's so far so good. Uh, We've been doing it for over two years. And by we, I mean me. (laughs) And of course, the team of people that helped me produce the show. And I'm eternally grateful for everyone that's been a fan since the beginning. You know who you are. And for the new fans that come on today and tomorrow and discover the show and decide to stick around, I truly, truly appreciate it. In case you missed last week's episode, I spoke to Joe Milmean of the Shiny Bees podcast. She uh, has a podcast about knitting, and it's the first interview I've had with a host um, that has a podcast on that topic. And we talked about Ready Salt Crisps. We talk about her life in the military, and we talk about um, how she's had listeners to her show uh, talk about all the f- interesting and fun places they've been as they've been listening to her podcast, which I think is really uh, interesting and, and fun when people tell you that. And uh, a lot of times you, you raise your eyebrows and you're like, you were where? So go ahead, listen to that. I think you'll really enjoy it. And she's really, really um, fun, engaging personality, a lot of energy. And we laughed a lot on that show. So I hope you enjoyed it. So this week I speak to Jason Parsons, aka The Angry Ginger. He's the host of Podcasting 101, Seven Days a Geek, and uh, a Better Call Saul podcast, and he's just a huge, huge podcasting geek fan, connoisseur, and he's been doing it since 2008. So he, it, I, in, in my book, that puts him into the veteran category, and I was really excited to have him on. I was on his show a couple of weeks ago. And uh, that episode was just came out recently for on season three of Podcasting 101. So go ahead and check that out. I'll put it in the show notes as well. Um, so this week, we had a, a great conversation about uh, a wide range of topics. He's a um, single father raising five kids. He's also got some other hobbies, such as uh, comic book writing, which uh, we, we delved into a little bit. And we talked about you know what it takes to start a podcast and what it takes to keep you motivated. Um, so I, I really enjoyed this conversation, and I think you will too. Stay tuned to the end of the show where we have a, what we call the retention hashtag, and it's our way of making sure that you're paying attention and a way of engaging with myself and, and with the guests on the show. And we also have a, a supporter of the show. It's the sponsor for this episode. It's Cast Source. Uh, a really fantastic resource for those of you looking to get transcriptions done on your podcast. So stay tuned towards the end where we give you a bit more details about that as well. So enjoy my conversation with uh, Jason, Mr. Angry Ginger. So Jason Parsons, thank you so much for being a guest on this week's Podcast Junkies. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> I think you might be the second person ever to actually use my real name. <laughs> what do you What do you prefer? 
Uh, well, I, I just, it became like this name of the angry ginger as a joke at first. And then I sort of took it over, uh, you know, Grant, my co-host, it started as like, you know, he was trying to put me down, I think. And then, so I, and I took it away from him and made it like this lovingly term for myself. So, and I'm not angry at all. So it, it, I just always present myself as the angry ginger. And now I think like, if you say angry ginger, there's certain circles who know that is other people are like, who the hell is Jason Parsons? <laughs> and we already have our guest. Yeah. Ask a uh, sissy, please. What's your daughter's name? Oh, no, this is my son, Carter. Your son. Yeah. I can't get it. You can't get it? Lexi will. Go ask Lexi. Mom, you don't want her to get it for you? Mm-mm. Well, you're, you're going to spoil the show here. <laughs> he's going he's gonna to make it even better. I think there's going to be an argument. <laughs> Three-year-old versus a 38-year-old. Who's going to win this? Yeah, you can take that with you. Go ahead. Thank you. So... I love your face. Okay. <laughs> so 30 more seconds, he gets credits on the, uh, in our interview. <laughs> hey, is that collectively? <laughs> because I guarantee he's coming back. <laughs> no, I mean, we've talked about, we were talking about it a bit pre, uh, pre-show, um, this idea that everything needs to be so perfect and so sterile, like for all the stuff that we listen to. And, you know, there's yeah. a lot of, a lot of podcasters coming in now that have their radio background and, you know, they're, God forbid, there's like something, uh, a humming or some child comes in or some siren outside. They're just like, nope, got to, got to do it again. But, you know, I, I think it depends on like the podcaster's life because like the idea is to be as clean and nice as possible because I mean, that's, I, I think what people are used to when they're listening to a recorded or live audio, you know, it's just uh, the way it's presented. But, you know, we, we podcasters have a life that kind of lives aside of from us. You know, we don't have soundproof bo- proof booths and everything we can live in. So like my life is absorbed inside of this thing all the time. And I, I, I like grew up, you know, listening to Kevin Smith's modcast and he's always yelling at his dogs or there's always something going on. And I always sort of appreciated that part of his life because, you know, the, you know, he'll be in this conversation or having a joke and all of a sudden it's like, Shecky, he's yelling <laughs> at the dog, you know, and I'm like, you know, the first couple of times you hear, you're like, who is Shecky? Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. So it's always been entertaining. And I was like, well, uh, when we first did uh, the last podcast or standing, there was four of us guys that come over to my place and we podcast and they, they always wanted like this clean sound and no kids and whatnot. And when I started seven days a geek, I was like, I knew better by three years in four, three years in, we were doing that show. I was like, if it happens, it happens. I mean, there's stuff you can cut out, but like the, the, the cat, the dog, the, you know, one of the five kids, uh, there's something always happening unless I record at 2 AM and then it'd be this podcast right here. (laughs) And And no one wants to listen to the angry ginger whisper <laughs> that's that would be the whispering ginger yeah yeah it would be <laughs> i don't know if you can be angry and whisper at the same time i suppose you can so uh, is i've always wondered is ginger a derogatory term i think it started out that way because it was like this angry ginger kid that was on youtube and then uh south park made a joke about it and i had no idea any of this existed and my grant just kept calling me angry ginger all the time and i was like what the hell is a ginger and he's like a redhead you know you you pale face you know you yeah, uh, all your freckles are souls. And I was like, I like that. So I just kind of ran with it. <laughs> so it might have been derogatory, but at this point of the stage, it certainly isn't for me. Well, I think that's the thing with those uh, those sort of, you know, whatever you want to call them, put downs or what people mm-hmm. think are put downs. If if the, it doesn't have the desired effect to the person that they're, they're saying it to, it yeah. sort of loses its, its importance or it loses its significance. That's and the, exactly what I did it for. <laughs> and the fact that you own it just means like, now they can't call you that and feel like they're putting you down. Right. Now I, now I demand to be called it, which is... <laughs> What's well, on yeah, social media and uh, are you using it anywhere else? Uh, yeah, well, social media and usually in the show is I'll say I'm the angry ginger. So to anything podcast related, it's... Uh, uh, anything on the internet, really. I think the the blog, I don't know if my dad blog, I might've used my name on that actually, but uh, everything else is, uh, yeah. I mean, it's been Angry Ginger for what, five years or so now. So you've had the, um, how many blogs, I mean, how many podcasts are we at total now that you've produced, well, that you started? That I, that I produced or that I was a part of? That you were a part of. I think it was seven or eight I've done oh, total. That's good. Yeah. And how many are still running? Uh, right now, two are running, Seven Days a Geek and uh, Podcasting 101. So, and then uh, you, you've you been blogging as well? I, I started one for a while, and then um, it, was a, it was a happy-go-lucky family blog about me and the kids and, you know, my wife in the background at, at times. She doesn't like any of the uh, social media, uh, internet life, but then a separation happened, so that blog has to change. <laughs> Rebranding. But, 
it was always like deconstructing dad. So it was always more of me as a parent and whatnot anyway. So it's just like the, some of the, the themes, I guess, and things will change a little bit and adapt. And I've even been thinking about starting a podcast about all oh, this whole situation I'm going through. Cause isn't that the, the podcasters, uh, you know, everything has to be on the mic somewhere. I'm like, no, this is really too raw for me to talk about yet. But, uh, yeah, I'm really like, shooting that idea around to start blogging a, a little bit and, uh, podcasting about it. So we'll see. Has has, have you always had this desire to sort of express yourself? Because that's what I mean, that's what blogging and that's what podcasting is. Absolutely. Not. Well, I've always been creative. Like I always wanted I, I grew up uh, into movies big time. I wanted to be a filmmaker uh, and uh, being a filmmaker. I think it was easier in my head, at least, is maybe I can be a, a screenwriter. Uh, so I learned how to I've always wrote things. So that was that was my deal. I went to college for a few years writing screenplays or learning to write screenplays. And then um, I had a kid, never went back to college uh, and then life evolved or whatnot. But I've always been the creative type person. Person, but uh, it, as a kid, I, I played with having a radio station. Like me and a buddy, we did all that. There's a whole story behind that. But uh, uh, and then I started listening to podcasts, and because of the the way I was as a kid, a, a fan of like wanting my own radio station and stuff, I just started doing it. And I was uh, a bit, uh, whoa, a bit more. <laughs> um, you know, private, maybe, uh, I was, I was willing to be open and whatnot, but I wasn't as, uh, I, I would say I was more introverted than extroverted at the time, but podcasting is really like, you know, now I'm like, look at me, <laughs> my arms are waving and I don't care anymore. Yeah, I really don't. I love it. Well, I think, uh, some of it comes out as you do it more and more and you get more comfortable and then you get feedback that people are enjoying what it is you're either writing or you're saying. Oh, yeah, if there was like, you know, like I got a lot of good iTunes comments from people like not just me, because obviously the shows are just more than me. But um, it, well, podcasting one, I guess, is more me but, and the guests. But uh, I've always gotten good comments on that. So it's like it, it certainly feeds you. I wouldn't say like it's not feeding my ego, but it feeds you to be like, OK, I'm on the right path. I am more comfortable. I'm willing to put myself out there because, the you know, that's the weirdest thing is like no matter what I've gone through in my life or any of my co-hosts, it's always relatable to somebody. Totally. And we shared it all like me and Grant and myself more than anyone else uh, on any of the shows I've done. We've always been like, look, just put it out there and, uh, you know, see how it goes. And like, no matter what we've talked about, you know, uh, a co-host of ours had a hemorrhoid. Uh, we've talked about a visectomy. We've talked about um, I mean, there's been talk about the separation a little bit. There's been like everything is out there and it's, either, it's usually for a laugh. You know, we share it um, for some humoristic type point of view, but uh, it, it doesn't matter what it is. People really dig, uh, you know, that that life, uh, you know, it's, it's a it's a fine balance between content and host, I think. Did the radio station you have have uh, call letters? Oh, the, the fake radio station we yeah. did? Is it? Yeah, it was uh, WZNJ. It was me and my buddy Nate. So it was Nate and J, WZNJ. And then a uh, buddy Bobby wanted to be involved. So we changed it to WBNJ. And then we would uh, put tapes like in a, the side, you know, the, the dual tape recorder. And we had a microphone we taped to the ceiling that hung from a cord. And we would just pretend we were DJs. And we were a pirate radio station. We got the whole idea from watching uh, Pump Up the Volume of Christian yes. Slater's Kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and we wanted to have our own pirate radio station. So I was like the the DJ who would take the calls. And my buddy was like, God, we were like 14 and 12. And he would do like, uh, you know, he'd call from India. He'd be like, Hello, my name is the John. And he would like, you know, he wanted to give all of his money for, to the radio station. And he was like, you know, I made all my money for pottery. <laughs> like just all the silly stuff as we were kids. And I have tapes like I haven't. Oh, you do. Yeah, I, I have them somewhere. I tried uh, putting uh, a show together for them one time, and it crushed me. I put this tape in there, and I started playing it, and I don't know who did it, but they recorded, like, it, and it was, like, music from the 2000s. So someone had found the tape, and, like, the CDs existed and stuff by then. Like, who's even messing with the tape? So I, I don't know if it was my, my little brother-in-law or what it was at the time, but erased like that one so uh and i and i and i went through a little bit of the other ones to see and i couldn't find anything so i think they're all gone which is kind of sad because i'd like to listen to those crazy old tapes well it's funny because uh i and you know, i grew up in the <laughs> 80s as well so there was there was this fear you would have of, of your some someone recording over those tapes and so you'd have to the little trick was tab. to break, break the tab off <laughs> yeah yep and this one uh, didn't, so <laughs> it was recorded. And over. then the other was uh, the the VHS tapes because my parents would re <laughs> record shows or have stuff there, and then we'd inevitably want to watch like I don't know Night Rider. Or I don't even I don't yeah. even know if I got the timing on that right. But <laughs> it was 80, yeah. 
Well, well that's how we watched pump up the, the volume was. And you know, it used to annoy me because my stepdad, we had a cheater box. So we would record or he would record all of these movies off pay-per-view like pay-per-view had just started, you know, so he'd like three movies per tape, you know, depending on the, ta- the speed of the tape. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're that old, you know what I'm talking about. Kids, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, uh, we, you know, I was like, oh, what's this movie? So we'd always like grab these VHS tapes in the middle of the night. And, you know, me and my buddy Nate, who we did the, the original uh, host was uh, for that radio station. And we you know, he lived across the street. So he was always over night. We'd always watch all these movies and we watched that and that just captured our imagination. So we just ran with that. But yeah, the VHS tapes used to have those little things too. Is there anything now, Jason, that you think translates um, into like the current uh, life that, you know, your kids are growing up in with where everything is digital, where you can give them a, a feel for what that was like? Because everything, you know, back then everything was so analog and we could touch, you know, the VHS tapes and, and even like the right. plugging in the Atari cartridge and stuff like that. And I'm wondering if we're, if, if we're losing a lot of like that tactile feeling for... for I, I- yeah, I think so. I mean, my kids do everything on their phone. Like I have a 55 inch TV that's sitting like four and a half feet from me and they will lay on their bed with their four and a half inch phone or whatever and watch Hulu and Netflix all day long. Mm. And I'm, it's a smart TV. Like just hit the Hulu button and watch whatever you want. Like no one's watching the TV and they're like, eh, I'm okay. Like I don't even ask to have a TV in their room. Like they did, like, literally will just sit and watch movies and TV shows and all that stuff on their phones. It's the, like, I'm like, I, I can't, I can't understand it. Like they'll read on their phone. They'll play games on their phone. Like they don't know how to like, there's a Wii. I think that's like probably the newest system we'd, we've bought because I, most of my kids are, well, all the four oldest ones are girls. So they never really got into video games, you know? So if they play anything on their phone, that's one thing, but they, they never like go try to put a game in the system and play on the TV. Like I'm, it's like foreign to them. Like if they can't have everything in their hand, and not interested. One of the things um, you were talking about, and um, you had the Seven Days of Geek, and they were in- giving you the Fifty Questions interview. And I mm-hmm. think one of the things uh, they asked you was about something that you missed, I think, from your childhood or something. And, and, and you you referenced uh, playtime. Like, playtime. <laughs> yeah. And so it's this, this whole idea. Um, you know, I grew up. You know, we would play in the streets, and that doesn't happen anymore. So no. I, I think that's something of what you're alluding to. Yeah, like my, my kids, like every once in a while, they'll go ride a bike for a little bit, but that's like a 10 minute thing. Like I lived on my bike. It was, I woke up and I was out. And that's another thing. Like, did parents not care about us when we were like, my kids didn't know I was in the for or my kids, my parents didn't know I was in the forest or hanging out in some strange apartment complex all day long with like kids I just met or I'd be down at the park. You know, once the street lights came on, that was your cue to go home because we didn't have cell phones or way to get a hold of us. And, you know, by the time you were out running around somewhere, you could have been two, three miles away from home. And you're like, shit, the street lights are on. Yeah. Paddle, paddle, paddle. <laughs> well, like, you lived on that thing. And uh, my kids are. Like their, their idea of hanging out is literally Skyping someone and whatever. And then maybe on the weekends I'll have a friend over or something. But I'm like, you guys need to do something. And they're like, oh, we do something all the time. I was like, no, no, you don't. Like all the time in the summertime. I'm like, all right, you guys need to put your phones down and get some friends over here and go play out in the yard or something. And they look at me like I'm a foreigner. Like they just don't <laughs> understand like my speak. <laughs> was was there... Don't get- was there a moment because um you you obviously you've mentioned the fact that you're um, a single dad raising five kids and mm-hmm. and you also have this part of your life that's really like um you know gives you a lot of happiness and a lot of joy the podcasting and and and, okay. and, and talking about um, uh, growing up and having how much fun you were having playing so I'm wondering if there was a moment when you you felt like you had to do this quick transition between uh, kid at heart and like dad having to like school your kids into like the first time you said something that you're like oh oh, shit that's like a dad thing to say um i i've always sort of balanced the both like like i'm really uh open and friendly with the kids like we hang out like i tell them everything like uh uh, all the stories from my youth or or anything i can share with them now but um they also know like uh you know there's you know i am the big person of the house believe it or not so I, i i will you know bring down the law if i have to but it's it's usually like once a month like oh dad's serious you know <laughs> and then it's uh yeah recognize and then it's good for a little bit but no i i think we've got it's a, definitely an interesting relationship because i don't have to like uh i mean yeah i'm the parent but i don't think i'm i'm like scolding them all the time or really in their faces uh all of that like i, I think my parenting is different I, i've talked to someone about this recently too maybe it was when i was on uh, diamond dave show i can't remember but uh it was like you parent differently as like you look at like your parents and I'm nowhere near the way they were. Like I, my parents were like these adults I didn't know. 
until like I became an adult and started getting to know them where like my kids know who I am and who I was. And like, they know all of this stuff and they're like, dad, tell us this crazy story about this one. You know, like they, they're always into this. So, uh, there's a very, very, um, and I'm really close with my dad. My dad is very similar to who I am. Um, but whatever it was when I was a kid, like I didn't know that part of him, um, which uh, is, is really strange to me. Like, do you find that to be true? Yeah, that's true. I mean, I, I think part of it is cultural as well, because, you know, the era that, you know, I, we grew up in, um, I would think, I get the feeling that parents are, were a bit more reserved. And I think there's always this, this fear of like, should I try to be, am I, should I try to be, you know, too much of a, of a friend to my kid and he'll take advantage of me or something like that. But I think nowadays what I see is I, I see a lot more closer connections between parents and their kids. Um, to the extent that it's possible, because I think these the new generation uh, is just grown up on technology so much, so yeah. that it's just influencing every aspect of their lives. And and we know, you know, you and I, you know, we know technology, but I I feel bad for parents who don't know like any technology, and right. they have these kids with these like ridiculous supercomputers in the palm of their hand. And they're one click away from like everything in the world in terms of like information, good and bad. So uh -huh. yeah, yeah, it really it, is. It's kind of scary, but like you had a three-year-old iPad, an iPad. See, look, there's the sleep <laughs> that's me right there. My words aren't working anymore. Uh, but you had you had a three-year-old iPad, and they're like, doo -doo -doo -doo, and they're you know solving the world's problems already. <laughs> with one of those things is like, who taught you how to use this thing? They like they come ingrained with yeah. that knowledge. Do you, uh, yeah, it's crazy because how, how they actually pick up some of the stuff, but I think they're so used to living in a world where everything is like a swipe or a, or a, or a pinch or a, or a poke on the yeah. screen. Yeah. Like the, this concept of like, I, re I remember, um, this was a couple of years ago, someone, t a friend of mine was taking a picture and it was a regular camera and there was a kid nearby and the kid immediately like walked over and said, can I see the picture? And like, oh. they, like, <laughs> like this, there's this instant gratification, like God forbid you had a 35 millimeter camera and they'd be like, what? I can't see yeah. like, what you just took. Pull a roll of film out of that thing. You'd blow their mind. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. Do, do you do, um, so with your kids, do you, try to educate them on like the way things were or do, do they just like hear those stories and then just like oh that's so funny daddy used to live like that it comes through that like i'm aware of like when i'm telling a story i'll be like okay like you guys don't know what this is so like i'll give them an explanation or we watch a lot of movies you know so i'll show them the movies that i grew up as a kid and they're gonna pay phone like what is a pay phone you know i'm like well here's a here's a thing here for you here you you'd put a quarter in there and you'd call a friend <laughs> like what like you could walk out to the street to make a phone call. I was like, oh, we didn't have, uh, you know, our calculator, phone, flashlight and video game doohickey in our pocket. You know, you know, Star Trek was way, way ahead of the time there. I was uh, interviewing Paul Culligan and he said uh, he was in the car and I, for, for whatever reason they had to turn on the radio. And then he had to explain to his daughter what the radio was. And he's like, well, it's this oh. it's this thing where they play like music you know the same 10 songs over and over and it's the yeah, songs they that, that they selected and then like there's commercials all the time and mm -hmm. and she's like whoa that sounds horrible <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I i never had to explain the radio to the kids i guess it's just sort of a to me it's still a a, a normal enough thing a uh, radio in the house though doesn't exist no not at all yeah I mean, Spotify, a uh, little Pandora a few years ago, stuff like that. Uh, and the radio was always played in the car. But yeah, I don't think I can't even tell you if I've ever had a radio play in the house since I've had kids. So in, ter in, in terms of the um, uh, the other things that uh, like you're, you're, you're a fan of or, or that you grew up with, um, you mentioned or I saw somewhere that you also write comic books. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, self-published. I yeah. mean, Marvel's not itching to hurt, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> Well, uh, is that just something that grew up out of your love of comics? Yeah, I, I, I grew up reading comics as a kid and then it was movies and I wanted to write movies. And then as I started having kids and realizing uh, there was a contest that that um, Wizard Magazine had, which was a comic book price guide slash magazine back in the day. Uh, but nothing's in print anymore, so it doesn't exist. But and, and they were I think they were I think it was them. They were running a contest with Marvel or whatnot. Or maybe that's where I read about it. And it was like, write a script, try to have a comic book made. And I was like, 22 pages versus 120 page movie. I, I didn't do 22 pages. So that's sort of how I got into 
listened to it. Um, and of course, nothing was ever picked up or optioned with them. But by then I was like, oh, I kind of got the bug. I was into it. And I was reading comic books again, uh, like 2004 or so. So uh, I was really into it. So I started um, getting on a website and meeting artists and stuff in, in town and, and trying to just create my own stories. And then finally, I, the podcast helped a lot. Uh, having an audience and wanting to create a comic book, they were like, yeah, you know, and I, I had a Kickstarter that um, was it? I needed 2000. I think it was funded at 2356 or something like that. So like it went over wow. and uh, the, I was able to self publish uh, the, the first issue like digitally. It exists out there for everyone to read. I found an artist in Spain and then he found a, a fellow artist in Spain that did all the inks and the colors and whatnot. So yeah, there's a extinction level events, the name of it and it exists out there in the world. It's pretty cool. Uh, uh, send me the link. I'd love to put that in the show notes as well. Okay. So, uh, so there's a difference between um, the there's the there's the writing of the actual story of the comic, mm -hmm. and then there's and then do you always have in mind like what the the picture is going to look like, or is that something you don't even think about as you're writing the story? No, I sort of have like a director's eye. So when I write, I write full script. It's not just dialogue or an idea. Like I'll actually be like, you know, bird's eye view of this or, you know, a uh, tight shot of this character. You know, I really describe the, the scenery and whatnot when I write. So and, and, and it's funny because like learning how to, to do all that, I, I've become, I think, a decent script writer. But the 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 language barrier between myself and um, uh, Franco that lives in Spain and he's a, um, a an animator a freelance animator, but now he's working for a, um, a company out there. So, the, the, but, but he, he reads English well enough and doesn't speak it very well, but still like when I'm real descriptive and whatnot, he's like, it takes him forever to Google translate it all. So he's like, we, you know, we had to learn. He's like, just write it like you're writing a fifth grade play. And it's so hard to, to, um, dumb down the, and I, I'm not nowhere near like an, uh, uh, this great writer or anything, but still, you know, when you're being really, you know, trying to explain everything and the only thing I haven't had to dumb down is the dialogue, obviously, but like the imagery has gotten like the second issue. I wrote that like in a breeze because I just had to write it real simple. So he was like, okay, got it. And, you know, he, he thumbnail it all out. Does this work? And I was like, oh, that's brilliant. You know, and then I'd see sketches that were more detailed and then they'd get pages and then they'd get colored. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm a comic book writer. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's it. So uh, how many episodes are you in? Uh, the, the second issue is 14 pages in right now. So I'm hoping within uh, a few months, it, like he's running real slow with it because like he has a job and, you know, so it's like this little indie book that we're doing. It's much slower than I wish it would be, but, uh, he does, I mean, it's really, really beautiful. Like he, I mean, like I said, he's an animator, so it's a uh, really nice line work and he's real, he just does a great job with it. Like I'd love to see it, uh, either animated or turned into a movie. Of course I would, but I, I mean, it, it, he makes it look way better than it should like people are like oh i like the art i'm like i'm the writer <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like what do you think of the story story yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what uh, how would you describe the the character because i, I imagine like if, and you can correct me if i'm wrong but i imagine if you're tr trying to describe like a comic book to someone you can't like tell the whole story of what's happening in the 22 pages you have to have this like synopsis right yeah, the first issue is pretty much set up. It's like this um, small mountainous town, like in the middle of nowhere where uh, a comet crashes. And it's basically like these three or seven kids. It ends up being seven. I think you're introduced to five uh, in the first issue and like the the day to day things they're all doing and, and what happens. And it leads to like this alien type of evasion at the end where like all hell breaks out. So uh, a lot of it's set up in dialogue and get to introduce the characters and you sort of get a feel for the world. And then the second issue is just bat shit crazy <laughs> it's action from minute one to i was like we're making a michael bay movie uh with better dialogue it, well, and, <laughs> it sounds like uh when you mentioned that you had seven characters i immediately thought of like stephen king books like it when, when i used to read those in the, in the uh, a lot and they would always have these elaborate like setups of all these characters that they had in the book and you have to sort of like pay attention because <laughs> over, yeah. the, over the course of the story like uh, they're important and their backgrounds are important and the way they connect with each other so well, I, I think I, that it makes for more you give a shit like look i'm gonna kill some of these characters off and what like i want like i learned like i learned a lot about 
story development and characters from just watching movies and and listening to like the DVD uh, director's commentary or the writer's stuff or any of that stuff. Like you, you actually, this is a film school one on one. People just go watch and listen to all that stuff. Read read the books on on filmmaking. And Joss Whedon will always like uh, you know Buffy, Firefly, the Avengers movies. That's Joss Whedon, the writer uh, director, and he will always create these characters that are amazing and you fall in love with, and then he will kill them on you. And that was my thing with this is like, I'm going to make you guys love every one of these characters. And there's going to be an issue where you're going to hate me. And uh, that was a hard thing to get to used to because they're like your babies, man. You like create this universe and these people and like you love like the, the after a while you're writing and they, they, they write themselves like, the, you know, the dialogue just comes out of them and these conversations and whatnot. And all of a sudden, you know, you turn the page and one of them's dead. And this is as hard for me as it is for the I hope for the, uh, you know, the viewer, the reader. Uh, so yeah, I, I definitely like creating that whole world and, and really giving the characters like their, these lives, you know, so you go in and you give a shit. Cause what's the point of reading it or, or be invested in it if you don't really care? I see, I see that a lot with these new shows like Game of Thrones and uh, Walking Dead. I mean, there's no one you can connect, uh, not connect with, but you you know fall too much in love with because you know from one yeah. season to the other, you have some season-ending scene that you're like, okay, I guess I gotta start rooting for that's, somebody else. <laughs> that's the thing. It's like you know, I I mean, this ELE uh, extension level event was you know seven years in the making. That you know everything's seven. I just realized, but like, well, it lived in my head for a long time. Finally, to the point where it's like, all right, this has to come out on the page, or my brain's gonna. Explode explode. Uh, so it, I would put it out there, but you, you just don't like now the, the, everything is created that way. It's like you, you, they, they do kill off characters. They are like, you know, you, you don't, you don't relate to all these characters because some of them are evil people and, and whatnot. And like seven years ago, I, I thought, okay, I'm, I'm kind of maybe ahead of the turn, but now I'm not like everything I've done. Like, you know, the sad part is, is like the first issue I'm seeing stuff that's happened like in movies now. And I'm like, you know, I didn't, I, you know, I wrote this years ago and now, you know, because it's digital, I haven't printed it and a lot of people haven't read it. You know, some, some, sometimes it looks like maybe it's script, but I, I had done it for First, but I call it the collective consciousness. You know, if you don't, if you create it and don't put it out there, someone else is going to. Totally. Yeah. I'm a big believer in that. Yeah. They always talk about that. Um, like when Einstein was creating the radio and then, um, what's his name? Fermi? Fermi? No. Uh, Marconi. Marconi. Sorry. The, oh. Yeah. So, but it was like happening at the same time across the, the world. Right. And, and they've had that happen with, you know, like in, Alexander Graham Bell and the other fellow yeah, yeah. who was on and they were racing to the patent office. Yeah. The story. Yeah, yeah. And, um, but that I think it's definitely that collective consciousness, and I think yeah. we start to see more and more of that. It's like these ideas pop up in random places of the universe, and like, wait, how is it that everyone's kind of thinking about the same thing? Yeah, it is, it, uh, yeah. I mean, look, I mean, Armageddon and Deep Impact came out the same year. <laughs> yeah, you always say that in Hollywood. What's going? What's up with that? Yeah. Like, someone like leaks out like a story about like the up and upcoming action movie. Like, oh, we got to make one of those too, and like you inevitably see them within six months of each other. Or it was like double movies, or like, oh, I've seen this already, but you know, different actor. Oh, the um, Wyatt Earp and the um, yeah, the, the, yeah, the exactly. One. Wyatt Earp and the, the better one, Tombstone. <laughs> yeah, Tombstone. Yeah. yeah, there's always one really good one and one not so good yeah, one. I, you so. know what? I've only seen parts of Wyatt Earp, but Tombstone, I love. I lived that movie. I like. So many times I saw that uh, Val Kilmer's Doc Holiday is amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm your Huckleberry. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> what uh, what advice would you have for aspiring comic book writers? Oh Jesus, I, I don't think I'm the guy to go to. Uh, you know what? Just read a lot of stuff. Like I just found out the other day, one of my favorite comic book writers, and I'm not like. I got five kids, so I quit reading comic books a while ago unless I can like grab a trade or something like that. I don't collect weekly like I wish I could because it's expensive. But um, Bendis, who writes Spider-Man, The Avengers, writes everything Marvel um, for years. He's one of my favorite comic book writers. He's got a book called um, Words to Balloons or Words from Balloons, something like that. Uh, there, those words are in there. Words and balloons are in there, I, I promise you. Uh, and it's, it's writing screenplays, but it's all the business of comic books. And I think anybody who's interested should definitely pick that up because he's been on both sides. He's an independent world. He's uh, been published through Marvel. He started independent, was picked up from Marvel, and you know still produces his own stuff. So I'm sure that, like, I just ordered the book. There's a bunch of information in that. But I think uh, read and just start creating. Like, I mean, this day and age, that's what it was. It was like, look, no one's going to hire my you know, weird, weird little ass that sits in Michigan and Grand Rapids doesn't know who I am. Like, sure, I've got scripts, but no one cares, you know? So it's like, well, I'll just make my own. And I think that's how you get noticed these days. That's how he got noticed. He started printing his own books and going to comic cons and, you know, showing people and whatnot. And now he's one of the biggest writers in, in the industry. Yeah. I think it's a matter of, uh, if you, if you do something that's of 
quality or, or that where, where your passion is evident, like it's on the page, then someone's going to sure. find an audience. And I was going to ask, there must be um, a community of indie comic book writers, right? Because that's, uh, is that how you found your, the, the guy who's doing your illustrations? Uh, there's a we- there's a site called Digital Webbing, and they have uh, two things you can click on, either paid work or collaborations. So you can, you know, and it works sort of like um, Deviant Art, where you can go in there and there's forums and pages, and you can see, you can either read people's scripts or ideas, or you can find people's art, um, whether it be pencils or, you know, full storyboards or, you know, uh, any of that stuff. So I just went in there because I'd read about it in a magazine and just started like talking to people and meeting people. And then it was like, hey, let's work together on this. Hey, I like your idea okay so you know i put an ad out there and and like my email blew up and (laughs) i felt like oh my god like someone likes my stuff uh you know and then you got to find the right person to work with and all that but yeah there's definitely it's like podcasting i don't own the community that well because like i don't live in it like i do podcasting um but i mean certainly um people are more than willing to you know uh, get noticed just like you are and they'll work together like the guy that i'm working on ele with um we, we just share ownership you know like i'm not giving him a page right i'm not paying him like i've given him a little bit of money to be like all right we need to hustle this along a little bit you know but uh other than that i mean people are you know when you want to get your stuff out there or be seen or be noticed like it's not always about money you know it's going to be slower it's a different process but uh it's definitely uh i think that's probably the advice to give is there is really just uh put yourself out there and start like if you want to make something just make it same with podcasting yeah i i think you should put out an intention to get that uh that, get it in print form as well the, it, that is my intention uh the the idea was for the two issues to be done then print and then like there's uh you know those, those issues will go out but it, it gets expensive when you start doing print like that's a, a lot of money to especially when you're doing you know on-demand print and it's not like these huge press runs you know so it, it costs almost as it's like three something an issue just to print you know mm-hmm. and then so there's really i'm not going to make any money off you know my my uh you know, the, the, the best thing for me is someone's buying the comic to read it. Like, and I don't need to make any money right now. That's like the coolest thing in the world if someone actually wants to read what I wrote. Very cool. Just, yeah. Well, we'll make sure if, uh, if you've got, if you do have another Kickstarter coming up where you're looking to get raise funds for the print printing, then we'll yeah. make sure. Make Hopefully sure we'll soon I'm going to uh, kickstart the, the third issue once the second issue is done. And you actually, you can go to extinction level event Uh, you can buy the issue there or you can just, uh, you can read the first issue. I put all, all the pages out there separately. Very cool. Mm-hmm. So, uh, segue in, into the podcast. What was the, um, the, the, the drive to start the seven days of geek show? Uh, we did a podcast called The Last Podcaster Standing, which was the four guys at work, and uh, that was sort of degrading. Um, there were people who were ready to be out. One of their wives was like, you're not doing that show anymore. Like, it was this huge mess behind the scenes, and I fought so long to have this podcast exist because I love doing it. So I was like, and and the geeky side of me, the part of me that's really just me, um, didn't exist so much. Like, I was the guy who... Uh, like I didn't bring anything to the table but me and I was the one that would just throw stuff at the wall like anything I would say uh, some of it would hit the wall some of it wouldn't uh, some of them they were fans of it uh, you know it was a it was a foul um, Howard Sternish type show uh, and as I it was uh, dissolving I, I wanted to you know develop something that was a bit more me where I could talk about the movies I love and the comic books and all that so uh, I started working on that and it, it pretty much worked out as that show ended seven days a geek started like there was an overlap of like a month or two where like we were figuring out how to end the show and we ended it. And I think maybe there was three or four episodes of seven days of geek out by then. Um, but that guy had been podcasting for a few years. So I just wanted to, I think it was just the next step, you know, where you like, you become so enamored with it and love with it. Like you, you put everything you've got into something, you know, it's not just uh, the, the, the show and the host anymore. It's uh, everything creatively um, p- put together by yourself. I was wondering, it's, cause that show was in 2012 and you said you've been podcasting for a couple years already. Right. And I- <laughs> Yeah. So August 28th, 2008 was okay. our first. Yeah. Our first. So now you're going on almost eight years. So what's, what's been your take on like what's been happening the past couple of years? I know people don't like to use the word resurgence, but I, I do feel like there's more of attention on the space. And I'm wondering if that's something you've seen and noticed as well. I, I think it's the the longer it exists, it's going to become part of the zeitgeist, you know, like years ago, you, no one knew what podcasting was. Now you watch TV shows where like I was just watching Scream the Series. Don't ask me why. 
And in the second or third episode, they introduce like this, uh, you know, serial type reporter who does a podcast, a crime podcast, you know, uh, Mark Marin has his own TV show about his, you know, he's a podcaster. Like it's, it's all this stuff now exists where like, uh, there's always something about a podcast and a TV show, which tickles me to no end. I'm like, I know what that is. You know, and some people are still like, what is a podcast? It was I, funny. I, uh, Mark, Mar- I was just watching, I was catching up on Mark Marin, and he's uh, this latest season, he's in like a rehab center. And the guy who is the counselor, he's like, he wants to do a podcast. <laughs> oh, excellent. See, I even started, I watched, like, just crushed it all on Netflix like two months ago because I work uh, nuclear security. And at night, you know, we're allowed to watch stuff as long as we're awake. And sorry, people, that's, uh, <laughs> that's the world we live in. So uh, uh, I, 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 like, I killed it. And I, I love that show. Like, that is, I was, and it was something I'd never, I, I knew he had a TV show, but I didn't know what it was, how it existed, or anything. Yeah. And I absolutely was like blown away by it. I lo- I like just binged it like in a, a few days, like absolutely. And I, I haven't been able to get on IFC and actually watch TV, uh, you know, as it's airing now. But uh, well, it's I, a good show. I, I was gonna take us uh, like a video capture of this scene where he's trying to give him. Uh, uh, count- he's counseling him, and Mark's like, "Oh, this is all bullshit." And then he's like secretly recording him because he wants to use the audio in his, oh, in his upcoming like, yeah. podcast episode. <laughs> <laughs> the best one was, I think, the first season where uh, he meets uh, was who was uh, the actress that like she sleeps with him in order to have him on her son's <laughs> podcast. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> in what world was is this become a thing where like I'm going to sleep with a podcaster? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Podcasters are yeah getting all right, the girl, yeah, getting all yeah. girls now. <laughs> Yeah, we've got a lot of groupies hanging out there somewhere. Did you say you worked in nuclear security? Yes, I do. Uh, How much can you tell us about that? About that much. (laughs) (laughs) I worked in nuclear security. Well, I'm getting like, uh, is it like... Um, I'm, I'm, uh, for some reason, I'm getting a vision of like Homer Simpson when he's that's like how sitting. I portray it. But no, that's that's like the you know control people. Those are the people who make actually would make a lot of money. Uh, no, I'm I'm uh, the the other side of that. I don't get to eat donuts and and push buttons, or rather, not push the button. <laughs> yeah, and so you, uh, I imagine you work some pretty crazy hours. Yeah, I work. Well, I I live quite a, a, a ways from the place, but it does pay good money. So I'm willing to have the hour plus drive every day one way. So by the time I do the hour drive and the work is it's a 12 and a half hour shift. So I, I have like a 16 hour day hmm. by the time I leave the house and get back home. But, do, you, do you like your job? You know, it's not bad. Uh, it, it's it, it actually is not bad at all. It's a really good job. And with the downtime, like I could do writing. Uh, I'm trying to get a new po- uh, laptop soon so I can actually edit podcasts there. I'm going to buy myself a little microphone. And when I have time, maybe do my intros and stuff there. Like seriously, I can get away with some stuff. How's the, how's the, this, <laughs> has the, is the sound good in there? Uh, at some places and other places, you know, you ain't going to hear yourself. <laughs> yeah. And I imagine there's some rooms where it's like uh, pretty good, and well, at the very least, you can get some pretty good sound effects. I imagine from some of the places in there. <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever announce that that's what I'm doing, other no. than just here on this show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hi, Ginger. Well, you you can p- kind of put the sound effect in there and just don't say what it is, and just like have it be right. like the intro for your next podcast or something <laughs> like that. Um, what what do you think is uh, you know obviously you, you mentioned your job and the crazy hours that you work and, and the fact that you're a um, single dad now. Mm-hmm. What do you think is one of the things that um, like people don't understand when you explain to them that you're a single dad? How do you do it? Uh, that's probably <laughs> what they don't understand. I, I, I mean, single dad, like, I mean, I have 50, 50 with a kid. So, but I mean, I, I guess I am a single dad. Uh, you know, I don't know if people understand it because like, I don't yet. It's still so new. It's like, it's a whole nother thing I'm trying to figure out, you know? Uh, you know, it seems like once you have one thing figured out, you know, three other things are thrown in the ring. It's like, figure this out. Adult. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. I get a, I get a feeling that people have like these preconceived notions about, well, the, Again, dating ourselves. I'm, I'm thinking about Mr. Mom with uh, mm. Mike, Michael Keaton. <laughs> right. I don't know if you remember that movie. Which 20, 225? Yeah. <laughs> Put the electric in the wall. <laughs> <laughs> so if this is like running around or um, or the other one is, um, what is it? Uh, Three and a Half Men? No. Oh, yeah. God, I haven't seen that in a while. <laughs> it's a good movie too. So yeah, I, I think that... Um, well, I, I, I think the preconceived notions are that um, I think the, the good thing about maybe this era or generation or, you know, I think fathers are a lot more hands on and, you know, paternal with kids than they ever were before. So uh, I don't know if that's 
a, a preconceived notion or if people don't understand that, but it's definitely like, to me, it's just natural. Um, what do you think is the most misunderstood thing about you? Oh, Jesus. What a question. <laughs> the most misunderstood, probably that I'm, I don't think anyone ever takes me serious and I'm rather serious, even though everything's a joke. Mm. Like I, I, I tend to put a spin on everything, but I'm like, inside everything serious. <laughs> <laughs> can you elaborate on that? Uh, nah. <laughs> I, no, I don't think I can. Like, uh, you know, like, and I'm nowhere like claiming that I'm like one of the greatest comedians in the world. But like, you know how you always hear like the funny people are always the most depressed. Yeah. Like, I, I wouldn't say that I'm depressed, but it is definitely like, you know, I, I think the humor is based off of like a, a lot of defense mechanisms or or, or things that uh, were happened when I grew up. Now it's just like a natural thing that just is everything is like got to be a punchline to me. But uh, it not it isn't it isn't just a in my life it isn't a punchline. You know, it's just the way I present things. I think. Is it uh, just the the idea of using laughter as like uh, like laughter being the best medicine? I think so. Yeah, yeah. I don't think there's anything, at least in my um, my world, uh, making someone laugh is is like one of the greatest gifts you can do to to, to someone. You know, like it it you know releases endorphins. It makes you feel better. It makes them feel better. It's uh, uh, it just I don't know. I don't know what it is about it. I just love doing it. You know. What's uh, something you've changed your mind about recently? Uh, <laughs> where do you get these questions? <laughs> what have I changed my mind about? Uh, I don't know. I uh, I don't know. I uh, that's an odd question. What have I changed my mind about? Let me think. Maybe we'll come back to that one. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I'm curious if you how much you your mind about. What, was you, that? Me, what have you changed your mind about? Well, it, it could be, I mean, sometimes it's about food or, you know, how different reasons, like I've I'm, I'm been thinking about maybe becoming more, less, eating less meat and, and I used to have different reasons for why I would do it. And now I've just been thinking about it more and more. And so. Not being so lazy. That's what I've changed my mind about. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't know if the separation has created a, an internal midlife crisis as well, but it's, uh, you know, like I started running again. I wasn't doing that for a while. I'm not doing it every day, but like I, I kind of want to feel a little bit better and that, that makes you feel better. I don't eat like a, you know, I try not to stop at the drive through all the time. I'm trying to eat a little bit better. So things like that, I guess I've changed my mind about. Yeah. Those are good things. Yeah. Do you, do you often run into people who have no idea what podcasting is? <laughs> Not as much as uh, I used to. Like it was, uh, you know, you had to be prepared to explain it every time you mentioned podcast. And now that most people at least have some type of reference point, you know, um, and maybe it's because of the circle I sort of run in now. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think it's as, you know, oh, it's an internet radio show or like, well, it's not really an internet radio show, but you know, it's up on iTunes and so iTunes is this thing that you download and, you know, like there was this whole, uh, you know, you had to have it at the ready every time. Uh, now I, I don't find myself doing that uh, too much anymore. That's so funny. I talked to, um, my parents about it as well. Cause I, I told them I have a podcast and you know, it's just the same exact questions. you like, you in in our community, it's you just take it for granted that you, sure. every, everyone yeah. knows. But then, when you, if, you, if you were to find, like I always say, if you were to find yourself like with a, you know, like a sixty five year old woman in an elevator, and she's like, "Oh, what do you do?" And you're like, "Well, uh, and it's, <laughs> uh, like, you might as well just tell her you're a janitor. It's easier <laughs> to explain." <laughs> I mean, you got to tell her what a, well, I guess you don't have to tell her what a microphone is, but after a microphone and headphones, it's all downhill from there. Old <laughs> time, old, the whole thing to her. Uh, old timey radio or something like that. Yeah. So that's cool. Uh, <laughs> so you've been in um, Grand Rapids, uh, born and raised? Yeah. Unfortunately, like <laughs> I, I love it. It's a great place to live, but it's also like I, 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 I'm older now. So like I don't go out sledding and and playing in the snow. So I'm like, I hate this stuff. <laughs> like I never understood snowbirds. And now I'm like, you know what? That's not a bad idea. Uh, and, and now, you know, I like my whole family's here. I've, you know, I'm 38. I've got all my friends here. So it's not like I can just pack up and move. You know, I got a job that's, you know, starting to pay me pretty well. So like I, I think my feet are firmly in the ground but man i would love to live anywhere where snow never fell again yeah we recently moved a couple a couple of years ago from uh, new york to la so, oh, and, oh wow and <laughs> yeah my wife's colombian and that's like it was primarily the weather that we moved okay in. and we lived through like hurricane sandy and a couple of like 
polar vortex single digit. Oh. Well, single digits <laughs> is nothing for someone from Michigan because you're right. like, oh, that's yeah, no, that hits us too. But I would love to be on LA. That's like a, one of the dream spots for me. Like if I was writing and actually had some career in that, I would be out there for yeah. sure. Yeah. But if you ever can swing a, um, a trip out here, there's the LA Podfest as well, which is a lot of yeah. I've I've seen that. That's been going on for quite a few years now. Yeah. So uh, they've got a lot of comics here. I mean, I was there last year, um, and it's just like Mark Maron's like roaming the hall. <laughs> so oh, really? We're chatting up with some other fellow comics, and the guy who plays his friend on the show as well, and they're just like hanging out. And I was like, oh, that's funny. He's just, I guess a lot of them, you know, live around here. So yeah, yeah, yeah. He does. He lives the, the L.A. or the, well, a lot of those comics do, and comics all have their own podcasts. Yeah. No, no, shortage, no shortage of that. Yeah, not especially not in L.A. So, well, uh, that's been an interesting conversation. Oh, thank you. I, <laughs> I, I gave it my all. <laughs> well, the last, uh, the one podcast we didn't talk about is Podcasting 101, which I guess is because of, it's almost like a marriage of everything because you love podcasting and you love podcasters and you already have a <laughs> podcast with your friends. So it just made sense that you would just have a podcast about podcasting. That's sort of what it was. was I kept getting questions about it. And then like, I love podcasters and I love the, the idea of people doing it. So I was like, I merged it all into one thing. I was like, well, I can sit here and learn from people because I don't claim to know it all. Um, and, and I can, you know, it's, it's a selfish way for me to interview people that I'm interested in, you know, cause that's, that's the one thing like everyone's like, how do you get all these people? I was like, just ask. Like anyone who wants to be on a microphone is going to say yes. Like I am rarely turned down. Yeah. You know, so it's uh, it, it's it works to my benefit, and I, obviously it works to their benefit because they get to you know self promote themselves, and there's the the cross pollination thing and whatnot. But yeah, it's uh, I I always like on Seven Days of Geek. What are you geeking out about? And, and podcasting is always one of the things I've always geeked out about. So it was nice to create another show just to you know it, it's all of that. So do you have a particular uh, conversation on podcasting one one that stands out? Um, who stands out on one on one? You know, I, I there, there's there's certain elements that stand out for a lot of conversations. Um, there, there's you know, and it's always like I, I think almost every show there's something that was like, oh, I love this part. And there's even like, um, I, I want to go back and pull those clips and just air those bits and be like, you know, if you like this little bit, go back and listen to it because. Mm. Uh, the the thing that I like about the show is, you know, you're you're learning a little bit, but also like you get a really good idea of what this podcast is like and who the podcaster is by the end. And I never went into the show thinking that 101 was just going to be like this avenue for people to find new shows to listen to. And it turned into that where like every week someone's on like, oh, I like that. I subscribed to that show. And I was like, oh, my God. This is genius. I never even intended for it to be like that way. So it's sort of uh, that's I think that's my favorite thing about the show. Very cool. Well, uh, as a fellow podcaster, I appreciate anyone who's helping to educate us about things that we don't know or just can't keep on top of because there's so many shows nowadays. I think you can't yeah. even have enough curation shows. I know, and, you know, what you're doing is good. Uh, I, you know, Dan Lizette with Podcast Digest, and you know, I, you, you would think like we would be stepping on each other's toes, but there's so many new and interesting podcasts out there, and we all have different interests, right? So we're gonna, we're going to find different yeah. shows as well. So I think yep. it, it, there's plenty of room, and and I have this like abundance mindset. So I feel like the pie is big enough for all of us. I certainly agree with that. Yeah. And, and you're right with the, you know, I mean, the, the content is, is da- different just because of your interests alone. So like we're not, and there's so many podcasts out there. We're never going to like, oh my God, you took the same guest I was going to have next week. I was like, well, that might've been an accident, but <laughs> it's not, there's a lot of people out there. Well, uh, Angry Ginger, where can folks track you down online? Oh, geez. Uh, monkeypoostudios.com is probably the, the best place. That's uh, the sort of the, the umbrella, the parent company of everything. You can find a comic book there. You can find Seven Days of Geek, Podcasting 101, The Better Call Saul, Season 1 show is up there. Um, uh, I think TLPS, the, the last podcast we're standing, is is um, at a little spot there as well. Like everything that we do, there's the Seven Days Geek.net for just that page, but we're, we're on iTunes and Stitcher, like all the places podcasts are. And I'm over on Twitter if you want to find me at uh, S7 EBN Days of Geek is the Twitter handle. We'll get all those in the show notes. Jason, thank you so much yeah. for uh, letting us into your life a little bit. Literally. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. You got a little bit of everything there. <laughs> all right. Hope you have a great night. So what'd you think, guys? I never know where those shows where the shows, where those interviews are gonna go. And I think uh, I just try to engage with my guest, Jason, 
uh, in this case, um, on the things that I feel that he has an interest in. And that's why we, we, we went a little deep on the, the comic book uh, topic because I thought that was something that was interesting for me because I always try to learn on these shows as well. You know, I, don't, I, I'm, I remember growing up with comic books when I was little and I'm always fascinated about the process. And I loved how we got to go in a bit deeper about how he writes his story and the fact that he gave us some resources, uh, the, the Words and Balloons book, I'll link to those. Um, Digital Webbing was another site that was mentioned. And uh, we'll actually, um, of course, give a, a link to his uh, extinction, extinction Level Event uh, comic book. And that's a mouthful, by the way. So uh, I hope you enjoy those. And I, I, I love hearing his stories about uh, childhood because, you know, I'm a bit nostalgic as well for that stuff. And so I like that we talked a little bit about uh, him growing up and the challenges he's having in really raising his kids in a world where everything seems to be so digital. So um, I think he's doing a, a great job and I was happy to have his uh, his son on there for a little bit as well at the beginning of the show. Hopefully you caught that as well. So um, I we are part of the Podcastica Network, so make sure you check out the other shows on the Podcastica Network if you have not done so already. And we have the sponsor for the show this week is Cast Source. Cast Source is a fantastic resource for uh, podcast transcriptions. They actually specialize in transcriptions for podcasters. I think transcriptions are really a fantastic way to repurpose content. Uh, you've heard me mention this a couple of times, but uh, there's once you have the show transcribed there's a lot of different places you can put it on obviously the easiest thing to do is put it on your on your show notes page but uh, one of the things i'm doing with clients is uh, repurposing it into a, um, a slightly re-edited post on medium and i've seen them um, get some good traction with that as well so give them a, give them a, a shot it's uh, podcastjunkies.com slash cast source c-a-s-t-s-o-u-r-c-e um, and see if uh, transcribing one of your, your most recent episodes is not something that uh, gives you a little bit more traction and gives your episode uh, a bit more legs. Thanks to Cedar and Soil for the intro and outro music. More info at cedarsoil.com. So the retention hashtag for this week is going to be Super Ginger. So in honor of his uh, comic book skills and his nickname, we're going to mash those up. Uh, hashtag Super Ginger. And his... Uh, Twitter handle is seven days a geek, but spelled a bit differently. It's S, the number seven, and then E V E N, and then days a geek. So uh, we'll link to that as well. But tag him, tag and tag myself, podcast underscore junkies. If you made it this far, then that's a, a nice way for you to show some love. So thanks again for listening, guys. Uh, I really love all the support you're giving to the show. Continue to tell friends about it. I, I see that people uh, sometimes come to the show because someone has, has recommended it to them. I'm incredibly appreciative when things like that happen. Um, and I know there's so many podcasts out there you could be listening to. And the fact that you come in and are listening to me on a regular basis really means the world to me. So um, keep doing that. Keep telling your friends. And we're inching our way towards 100. I don't know what we have planned just yet, but I think some of the things that I want to do and try later on this year is maybe at some point do a live event, maybe go on the road. So if that's something that's interesting to you, let me know. Um, we've got podcast movement coming up as well. I'm going to meet a lot of the past guests and fans of the show, and I'm going to have a fun time. If you're not um, going to podcast movement, I highly suggest you check that out. All uh, If you haven't done so already, it's, it's a, just a great way to geek out with fellow podcasters, our tribe, so to speak, for three days in a row. So do that. Uh, go hug your mom, hug your dad, have a fantastic day. Love you guys. And we'll talk soon.